Thank you for joining us in another session of Bible study as we continue to study in the book of Romans. Today's lesson comes from chapter 7, verses 1 through 6. The lesson is entitled, No Longer Schizophrenic. <laughs> you, have a, you have the perfect husband. Now, as you may notice, Pastor Graham will not be with us this evening, but he asked us to partner in this presentation of this lesson this evening. So Minister Patterson and I welcome this opportunity to partner together in sharing God's word this evening. With that, um, Minister Patterson, any opening comments you want to make? If not, just if you would open us with prayer and go ahead and begin our lesson. Uh, first of all, good evening, everyone, and uh, blessings to you all. Uh, this is a wonderful study. I'm very happy to be a part of it. I'm glad that Pastor Graham is uh, doing this because uh, you're going to find as we continue through this study of the Book of Romans, it uh, is a wonderful, uh, wonderful letter that you can put into practical application of your life and get a better understanding of your faith. So Amen. Uh, uh, on that note, uh, let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you once again for this opportunity to fellowship together and study together, uh, understanding our faith that much more. Yes. We thank you, Lord, for the forgiveness of sins, and we thank you for bringing us to this point of the evening where we can study and fellowship together with one another and continue to grow in grace in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Yes. We pray for Pastor Graham in his absence, and we just ask that you would give us uh, ears to hear, a heart to be obedient, and a mind to apply what we learn on today yes. in our lives. Bless those who are here. Bless those who will be coming in and joining us. And bless those who, for one reason or another, could not make it. And we just thank you, Lord, for this opportunity to continue to study your word. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 This is a wonderful study, I tell you. And uh, Romans is a great book. Matter of fact, when I got, when I first became a Christian, one of the first books of the Bible I read was Romans. Yes. And what intrigued me was uh, how Paul used the gifts that God has given him to help me to understand my faith and help Amen. us to understand our faith. So um, this is a wonderful study. So on that note, uh, let us begin. Uh, once again, Deacon Lewis told us the title, No Longer Schizophrenic. And, <laughs> and you have the purpose, perfect husband. And this is found in Romans 7, uh, chapter 7, verses 1 through 6. And uh, this week, we will study Romans chapter 7. In this chapter of Romans, the Apostle Paul explain, explains the condition of a person's mind who is confused about their new identity in Jesus. Mm -hmm. Schizophrenia is a condition of the mind in which a person is confused about who they are and has lost the sense of what is true. This causes them to be unstable in their emotions. When a child of God is still trying to gain approval and acceptance by God, <clears throat> excuse me, through their behavior, they live in a state of spiritual schizophrenia. Yes. They are confused about who they are and what is true about them. I remember when I used to be so confused about my true identity. I thought my behavior defined who I am. Mm -hmm. so when I did good, I considered myself good. But when I failed, I considered myself bad. Mm. Was I righteous or unrighteous? Was I qualified or unqualified? Had I done enough to please God or did I need to do more? Mm -hmm. I came to the conclusion that there was something wrong with me because I could not get it right. This kept me in a constant state of confusion about my identity, which affected my emotions negative, negatively. I did not experience the peace that was promised to me in Jesus. And we can see that today with uh, us as believers, yes. as well as those who are unsaved because those who are unsaved 
They tend to rely on what society, how society thinks of them, how people think of them, how people think that they should be. But oh, thank God for his spirit and his word, yes. because it is through his word and through the spirit of God who lives inside of us, gives us that peace knowing who we are and whose we are. So just keep that in mind as we continue through this lesson. Yes. <clears throat> Excuse me. When I realized that I was no longer bound to the law and its requirements of me, I was set free from spiritual schizophrenia. Mm -hmm. I realized that my identity did not come from my good or bad behavior, but rather through my union with Jesus. Amen. Jesus is my new spouse, covenant partner. I am no longer in covenant bondage with Satan. I have become one with him. He gave me his identity and my failures can never change who I am on the inside. This has brought emotional stability and the peace that passes understanding to my heart and life. In today's study, you will learn how you too can live free from spiritual schizophrenia and live secure in your new identity in Jesus. Yes. You are no longer bound to the law. Amen. You have a new spouse, new covenant partner. His name is Jesus. And here's what Romans 7 verses 1 through 6 from the, looks like from the Living Bible says, now, dear brothers and sisters, you who are familiar with the law, don't you know that the law applies only while a person is living? For example, when a woman marries, the law binds her to her husband as long as he is alive. But if he dies, the laws of marriage no longer apply. So while her husband is alive, she would be committing adultery if she married another man. But if her husband dies, she is free from the law and does not commit adultery when she remarries. So my dear brothers and sisters, this is the point. You died to the power of the law when you died with Christ. Yes. And now you are united with the one who was raised from the dead. As a result, we can produce a harvest of good deeds for God. Therefore, my brethren, you also have become dead to the law through the body of Christ that you may be married to another, to him who was raised from the dead, that we should bear fruit to God. When we were controlled by our old nature, sinful desires were at work with us, and the law aroused these evil desires that produced a harvest of sinful deeds, resulting in death or condemnation. But now we have been released from the law, Yes. Died to it and are no longer captive to his power. Praise God. Now we can serve God, not in the old way of obeying the letter of the law, but in the new way of living in the spirit. And that is good news. That's good news. I don't news. know about you, know about you, but it's good news to That's me. That's good news. Because what the analogy that Paul is using is that now that we have been born again through uh, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Uh, I think Corinthians talks about it. It says, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away and behold, all things become new. And this is what Paul is using, using in this analogy. So we were once uh, in covenant relationship with, with sin, with the devil, with evil. And because we were in covenant relationship, we were using, we did things based on our relationship with Satan. Uh, but now that we have been born again, we have new life. Uh, we have been resurrected into new life, if I had to use the term. And that is good news, y'all, because now that we have new life, we get a fresh start. We have a better understanding of who we are and who we are now that we're in Christ. And we also uh, are in new covenant with uh, God through Christ so that because we are those things, we now can, um, this is what I'm looking for, we now 
can, as the Bible talks about, walk in newness of life, being dead to sin, but alive in Christ. And Minister Bass, yeah. I, I like the way Paul uses this illustration of yes. marriage to Amen. show the parallels between the marriage and laws and, and the law mm -hmm. that we have been freed from yes. by Jesus' work on the cross. Amen. Uh, new life, new commitment, uh, just a whole new way. I know for those of us who are married, I know I've been married for 31 years. It's a whole new deal. Yes. It's a new deal. Uh, things I used to do, I I don't have to do them and I really don't want to do them. And that's the key. I don't want to do them because of my new life in Christ, because of my new commitment with Christ. I have new covenant and new commitment with my wife when I first married her. And I still have that commitment. And uh, that's just a wonderful thing. It's a whole new thing. You know, yeah. you have kids and, you know, you're, you're doing things that are pleasing in God's sight. So uh, I believe, Deacon Lewis, that's how Paul is. Paul uses this excellent analogy of marriage to help us to understand how we too are married spiritually through, uh, spiritually to, uh, to God through Christ. And living, living in the spirit because of the Holy Spirit that was within us that guides yes. us in God's mm -hmm. ways. Yes, amen to that. Which brings us to our first question. <laughs> All right. Who does the law apply to? Well, the answer is the living identity which affected my emotions negatively. I did not experience. Wait a minute, let me read this again. Hold on. Ooh. What does the law apply to? Excuse me, I was on the wrong page, so please forgive me. Mm -hmm. The answer is through, wait a minute, let's see, what is the first one? The living. I think this might be a typo. This is page four. Yeah. It says, who, oh, I see, what the, I see what the answer is now. There's no period. I'm big on periods and commas, y'all, so excuse me. <laughs> if I saw that period, I would stop. But it says, the answer to the question is, to the question, who does the law apply to? That is the living. The that living, that's right. Those that's right. who are uh, alive now in Christ. Those of us who were once dead, uh, in sin and trespasses. We are now dead to sin and now we are alive in Christ. So that's the answer to the first question. Yes. The second question is, when did you die to the power of the law? Through the body of Christ. When he died on the cross, we died with him. Yes. And, and I don't know if you were watching on uh, watching last this past Sunday's uh, worship services, I think Pastor Graham said, um, "I live in because I live in. Nevertheless, I live in Christ." And I just yes. can't remember the scripture right now. But if you remember that, that's what he said in his message. And uh, so that's what that's talking about. A third question is: Now, who are you married to? And what is the result of this union? You are married to another, to him who has raised, who was raised from the dead, that we should bear fruit to God. Yes. So because we are now married to Christ, we now can bear fruit to God. Because we were in dead and sin, we were bearing, we were bearing fruit too. <laughs> mm -hmm. Wasn't to God, it was it were not only was it, it wasn't to God, it was to Satan. And guess what? The fruit was rotten. <laughs> we were bearing rotten fruit. Uh, there was a song years ago at the, that Billy Holiday wrote. We were we were bearing strange fruit. <laughs> yes. So, uh, that's not now. That's different because we are married to another, to yes. Him who was raised from the dead, that we should bear fruit to God. Yes. Which brings us to our next question, which is. When you were bound to the law, what did it produce in your life? The law aroused these evil desires that produced a harvest of sinful deeds, resulting yes, yes. in death 
or condemnation. That's that strange fruit. That's that rotten fruit. <laughs> That's that fruit that uh, is not pleasing unto God, but it was because we were bound to the law. Bound to the law. And it put, and that's what happens when the law produces what the law produces in your life, because you must understand the law was, I think it's in Galatians, the law tells us, Paul tells us in Galatians that the law was our schoolmaster to teach us that we were sinful and that we needed a right relationship with God. So uh, that's the answer to that question, which brings us to our next question. And our final question here, it says, now that you have been released from the law, how is your new life different? Well, we've been talking about it since we started this course, uh, this study rather. Now we can serve God, not in the old way of obeying the letter of the law, but in the new way of living in the spirit. Yes. So that is awesome. We now have new life because the we can't, we can't, uh, we can't, uh, put, we can't do the whole law. As a matter of fact, the Bible tells us that if we, if you fail in one part of the law, you fail the entire law. But once again, the law out to us how how much we fall short. Yeah, and and that's the whole purpose, uh, uh, Deacon Lewis. It points us in the direction that it points us in the direction of Christ. Absolutely. Uh, the one who uh, has made this new life possible for us as believers. Amen. Continuing on, it says in verses one through three, the apostle Paul addressed those who were familiar with Old Testament law. In the Old Testament law, the law gave the wife no option of divorce. The man could divorce his wife, and that's found in Deuteronomy 24, verse one but the wife could not divorce her husband. Therefore, the only hope a woman could have of being freed from a man that didn't treat her right was for one of them to die. The apostle Paul used this illustration to show us that we were once married to the law. Yes. The law defined who we were. Mm -hmm. It showed us our sin and condemned us and made us feel like we could never be good enough. He explained that the only way we could ever be free from this union with the law that enslaved us to sin was if a death occurred. Yes. The good news is a death has occurred. When That's good Jesus, news. Yeah, it is too. When Jesus died on the cross, your own sinful self died with him and you were released from the requirements of the law. You were free to marry another. When you said yes to Jesus, you rose again in union with him. He gave you his very identity as his bride. You are now married to Jesus who was raised from the dead to make you one with him. When you were joined with him, you became he became your new spouse, your new covenant partner. Amen. Amen. And I love this. I, as I'm reading this, I'm thinking about how Paul uses the analogy of marriage yes. uh, because when I became married to my wife and vice versa, <clears throat> excuse me, new covenant now. That's it. Single life over. <laughs> <laughs> some people don't, some people don't like to uh, agree with that, but uh, when you are in new covenant, your single life, your, your covenant is a single person. That's over with now. It's a new life. It's, a, it's a new beginning. Yes. Uh, and it's a new beginning. If you do it God's way concerning marriage, uh, you'll be able to produce good fruit. Amen. Uh, so that's the good news. Your we, when we marry our wives, we are a new covenant partner. When we are married to Christ, uh, he is our new covenant partner. Now look again at verses five and six. Here the apostle Paul explained that when we were married to the law, sinful desires produced sinful deeds which resulted in condemnation in our hearts. The only power of the law 
had was to show us how we didn't measure up. Mm -hmm. But now that we are no longer captive to its power, it can no longer judge us as guilty. So now we can enjoy our relationship with our new husband, Jesus. In contrast, in contrast to the law, we don't have to try to keep our new husband happy by trying to live up to his standards. Rather, we live by responding to his unconditional love for us. Yes. We love him because he first loved us. That's found in 1 John uh, chapter 4, verse 19. He tells us that we are perfect in his sight. And as we receive his love, the spirit of grace empowers us to live a righteous life. That's found in Galatians 5, verses 22 through 23. Romans 7, 6 shows us that we are now free to honor our new husband, Jesus, not by the old way of trying to obey the letter of the law, but in the new way of living in the spirit. And when you live in the spirit, it means you are powered by the spirit to obey the Lord and his command. And that is such good news Deacon Lewis, yes. because, and I think I've said this many times over, we as believers have everything that we need. Yes. We have salvation. We have grace. We have the love of God. We have his word and we have the spirit of God living in us, leading us and guiding us according to his word, as it says here, to obey the Lord and his command. The key for us is that I think it says in Timothy, uh, Deacon Lewis, we have to continue to study his word. Yes. Do ourselves approved unto him, rightly dividing the word of truth and, and living that truth out in our lives. And it means we are powered by the spirit to obey the Lord and his command because we love him. Yep. He loved us first. Amen to that, brother. And we both have pointed out how, you know, how, much we appreciate how Paul used marriage yeah. to provide this illustration to all of us so it'd be better understood. Yeah. So I want to talk a little bit here about um, being married to the law versus being married to Jesus. Amen. The law is like being married to a perfectionist. Oh, law. No matter what you do, no matter what you do. You never, you never be good enough. What? Perfection. You, you never be approved. Being married to Jesus is like being married to the perfect husband, perfect spouse. Mm -hmm. He sees only perfection in you. He never brings up your mistakes or holds your past against you. You are completely approved and unconditionally unconditionally loved by him he Amen. sees you doing right and living right by the power of his spirit on the inside of you again Amen. we are guided yeah by the holy spirit that was in us to do his will not yeah. our will the holy mm -hmm. spirit will guide us to do his will yeah the contrast yeah between being married to the law and being married to Jesus is, is simply amazing. Yes, it is. Uh, what, some examples here. While the law says, serve me, Jesus says, I came to serve you. Mm -hmm. While the law demands, wash my feet, Jesus says, let me wash yours. The mm -hmm. law says, try harder. <laughs> Jesus says, let me do it. Let me do it. Come unto me. Mm -hmm. The law says there is no, there's one more thing you need to do. Jesus says you are perfect forever. Mm -hmm. I see no flaws in you. Mm -hmm. While the law condemns you by saying you will never be good enough, you can't do it. Jesus mm -hmm. cleanses your heart from all shame by saying, My beloved, you are very good. Now rest in my love for you. Yeah. See, 
so many Christians still see themselves married to the law. That's why they live in constant, you've covered this already, Minister Patterson. They're, yes. they're constantly struggling of, of this condemnation mm -hmm. and sin. Mm -hmm. But thank goodness, you now know and understand that you died to the law and mm -hmm. your new spouse, your new husband is Jesus. Amen. Amen. Isaiah 54, four through five says, it reads, fear not, you will no longer live in shame. Don't be afraid, there is no more disgrace for you. For mm -hmm. your creator will be your husband. The Lord of heaven armies is his name. He is your redeemer the Holy One of Israel, mm -hmm. the God of all earth. Amen. And I have a question here I want to respond to. And the question is, when you understand that you are no longer under the requirements of the law and that your new husband is Jesus, what will you live free from? Well, <laughs> we talked about it in the previous scriptures. We will live free from shame and fear. No more disgrace. You will no longer live in the shame, fear and shame when you realize you are no longer bound by the law. But instead, yes. you are married to Jesus. Your heart will rejoice when you realize that he has clothed you with dignity and honor. Mm -hmm. Isaiah 61.10 says, I am overwhelmed with joy in the Lord my God, for he has dressed me with the clothing of salvation mm -hmm. and draped me in the robe of righteousness. Amen. I am like a bridegroom in his wedding suit and a bride with her jewels. Mm -hmm. <laughs> when you're married to someone, you know, when you're married to someone, you take on the identity. You become mm -hmm. one with them. Everything that they have now belongs to you. Mm -hmm. well, on a personal note here, when my wife was born, her name was Susan Jenkins. Then one day I came along and Wilbert Lewis and chose her and asked her to be my bride. <laughs> and she said, yeah, that I... About 42, almost 42 years ago, mm -hmm. when she said yes to me, her identity changed and her new name became Susan Lewis. And if I may add a little caveat to that. Yes, sir. Uh, my wife sang yes, at your wedding. Yes, that's right. Witness <laughs> how God is good. Yes. <laughs> Your song on the Lord's Prayer at our wedding almost 42 years ago. And right. we became one. We are now one. Everything I have belongs to her, and everything she has belongs to me. The Amen. new covenant that we mm -hmm. honor. And he Paul used this analogy. The same is true with your relationship with Jesus. Mm -hmm. The Bible says that even when you were a sinner. Jesus loved and died for you. Mm -hmm. He chose you and asked you to be his covenant partner. When you say yes, yes to him, your identity changes. Your new name becomes righteous. Yes. You became one with him. Everything he has belongs to you and everything mm -hmm. you have belongs to him. When I said yes to Jesus. Yep. I became righteous, holy, innocent, blessed, qualified, favored, approved, because I am married to Jesus. Mm -hmm. You and I can rest in his abundant provisions for us because we are his beloved. Yes. And we had a new relationship. Now, the world is going to tell you different. <laughs> the world is going to tell you, call you all good names and tell you all kinds of things where you fall short. But in mm -hmm. Jesus' eyes, in God's eyes, yeah. mm -hmm. this is how he sees us. And it's upon us to yes. adopt what God says about us and mm -hmm. not be sidetracked and, and, 
and distracted by what the world Amen. says about us. Amen. Let me go to Ephesians. Ephesians 5, 25 through 27 reads as follows. For husbands, this means love your wives just as Christ loved the church. He gave up his life for her to make her holy and clean, washed by the cleansing of God's word. He did this to present her to himself as a glorified church without a spot or a wrinkle or any blemish. Instead, she will be holy and without fault. Holy and without fault. Amen. That's now, good news there. Yeah. That's good news. Why did Jesus give his life for you and me? To hmm. make us holy and clean. Without fault. Without fault. That's what Jesus says about us. What God says about us. Mm -hmm. How does he present you to himself? He presents us to himself gloriously without spot or wrinkle or any other blemish. Mm -hmm. When we are in Christ, this is who we are. Righteous. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Without a blemish or flaw. This is the way God sees us. Mm -hmm. Not what the world tells us. We got yeah. to separate the two. And I if wonder. Deacon, go ahead, Brother Deacon, Madison, uh, Deacon uh, Lewis, I now am beginning to understand just by that, as we've been going through the lesson, I have a better understanding of the title now. Uh, yes. Schizophrenia, because yes. the world will turn you into a schizophrenic. Yes. <laughs> Uh, you can, I, I always marvel at the, uh, the, the magazines that you see on the magazine rack, you know, for men and women and the world tries to tell you, this is how you do this. This is how you do that. This is how you can achieve this. This is what you can do to do this. This is the superfood that you can eat. This is the food that you can't eat. This is the way you're supposed to approach a person. This is how you're not supposed to approach a person. And I can understand now why <laughs> yep. this is the title of this lesson is you know, schizophrenia, because the that, world will turn you into schizophrenic if you're not, if you're not careful. <laughs> and we know that the world is of the devil. Yeah. And that's what, because yeah. you got to be, you got either you fall either with God or you're with the devil. Yeah. And the world will lead you down the wrong path. Yeah, it will too. And if you don't know who you are, anybody mm -hmm. can claim you. Boy, you said a mouthful there, brother. And that's, that's why it's so important for us, all of us. Yeah. yeah. That's about as true as the day is long. <laughs> <laughs> Ephesians, let me go to Ephesians here. Mm -hmm. Ephesians 5 27 says that Jesus presented you to himself holy and without a single fault. Mm. In Jude 124, chapter one, verse 24, it tells us again that Jesus presented you as his bride, unblemished, mm. blameless and faultless before the presence of his glory in triumph, joy and exalt, exaltation mm -hmm. with unspeakable, ecstatic. ecstatically delight. Amen. Listen to the words of the love of love to you from the Songs of Solomon, chapter four, verses seven mm -hmm. through nine. Let me read that. My darling, everything about you is beautiful, and there is nothing mm -hmm. at all wrong with you. Mm -hmm. You're beautiful from head to toe, my dear love. Beautiful beyond comparison, absolutely flawless. Come with me, my bride. You've captured my heart. You looked at me and I fell in love. Mm. One look my way and I was hopelessly <laughs> in love. But that's, that's an interpretation. I mean, that's the version from the Message Bible. Mm -hmm. But how does your heart feel when you hear him speak these words of love mm. to you? Yeah. When God speaks these words of love, it encourages us, it lifts us, it blesses us, yeah. it makes us love him even more. 
Amen. Amen. It helps us to realize all he's done for us mm -hmm. in this new relationship and covenant partnership. Yes. This yes. is how your new husband, Jesus, feels about you and how he cleanses you by washing you with his, his word. word. When you fail, he does not shame you or make you feel guilty for your mistakes. Instead, he cleanses your heart from all fear and shame by mm -hmm. reminding you of what of who you are. That's what we need to remember. Who yeah. God says we are. Yeah. He says, "My beloved, you are man. You are perfect in every way. I see no flaw mm. in you." Now, this is through Christ. Yes. As you yes. receive His love by agreeing with, we must agree with His good opinion. Yes. Of you. Mm -hmm. You live free from fear and shame and are changed from the inside out into his very image. You begin Amen. to look just like your new husband, Jesus, not by, <laughs> again, not by any effort of your own, but by, but by the spirit mm -hmm. that works in you, Amen. the Holy Spirit that is within us. Yes. Guide us mm -hmm. with God's love. Amen. Amen. Our lesson for today. Well, Minister Patterson, I'll allow you to respond to this as well. Mm -hmm. What is the main truth that we've learned today about how and how you will apply this in your life? And before you respond, Minister Patterson, I just want to say, I, as a believer, I'm reminded daily hmm. that I have the Holy Spirit within yeah. me mm -hmm. and that the Holy Spirit is greater than anything in this mm -hmm. world. Mm -hmm. Living each day in the spirit of the mm -hmm. Lord reminds me of who God is and who he says I am. Amen. Any Excellent. comments or uh, uh, reactions uh, to this lesson that we've had for the day before you close us out? Any comments? It encourages me that much more to realize that because I am in Christ, I am a new creature. Those old things have passed away and everything is new. Uh, I am the righteousness of God through Christ. Yes. I have everything that I need. And as I continue to grow in my faith, because I'm a firm believer that this is a lifelong uh, growth process that as I continue to uh, allow the spirit of God to lead me, um, I can do more things, not in and of my own strength, but by the spirit of God. I can be uh, a blessing to others that much more. Uh, I can please that God that much, excuse me, I can please God that much more by bearing fruit as we talked about earlier in the lesson. Yes. And, and also one of the real blessings or one of the blessings I feel is that you see God in action in your life through the yes. power of his spirit. Amen. And I don't know about anybody else. That brings me a lot of happiness and joy knowing that God loves me enough that I can love others just like he loved me and see the benefits of that. And this teaching is so important, especially for yeah. times like we live in now. Oh yeah, oh yeah, absolutely. And so much evil is mm -hmm. in this world. Knowing that God loves us, mm -hmm. wants the best for us, we simply have to trust him. Yeah to do what he says he's going to do. Mm -hmm. And that's when the joy comes to bear. And I wonder, Deacon Lewis, that I believe, I think the songwriter said it best. The world is hungry. Yes. For the living bread. And that's what they're looking for. They're looking for something that's alive, if I yes. had to put it in those terms. And well, 
God is life. And they're yes. looking for that. Yes. And I think what's happening is now people are realizing that much more that the world can't satisfy that hunger that they have for life. And I'm talking about the life through Christ. Yes. Because the life of the world, it it, it can get stale. <laughs> it, it can it can grow old. It can die. It can get thrown away in the garbage. And you still, they still have that look. They still have that hunger. They're looking for that living bread, that bread that never, that never, uh, that that never gets stale. And that's what Christ provides for uh, us as believers and to the world. And as yeah. believers. We are called to share that good news. Yes, we are. Of Jesus Christ in the midst <laughs> of troubled times like Amen. we find ourselves in today. Amen to that, brother. Well, that wraps up our lesson for today. Um, I'd like to, if there's nothing else, Minister Patterson, I'd like to go ahead and close us out with our closing prayer. And um, is that it? Yeah. As always, right. uh, a pleasure to work with you. Uh, it's always refreshing, and I just I'm just enjoying this study in Romans because I love it. I'm learning more, and the things that I already knew it have been have been reconfirmed and reaffirmed, and uh, it's just helping me to grow that much more. So, Amen, Amen. Let us let us, let us close with prayer. Our God. And our Father in heaven, we once again humble ourselves before you to give you honor and praise. We praise your name above all others. Lord, we thank you for this opportunity to share in the study of your word from the book of Romans. We pray that all that was said and will serve to encourage us and strengthen us to do your will and our actions will further the building of your kingdom here on earth and we thank you O lord for jesus and the finished work at calvary and now as we prepare to leave this zoom session we pray O lord that we will not be separated from your divine care and protection guide us we pray this we ask in the precious name of Jesus. Amen. Amen.